This looks like some kind of a weird brownie. This one looks like some kind of a scone. And I kind of want to eat both. How wonderful person this is, Anton. And today we're going to be talking about meteorites. Because that's what these are. Both of these are Martian meteorites, and are actually known as the Los Angeles meteorite. Two of many, many different meteorites discovered on planet Earth that we know today came from Mars. There are almost 200 on this list, but this list is a little bit outdated. As of July of 2023, we now have almost 300 different meteorites definitively confirmed to have come from the red planet. But I guess the question some of you might be asking is, why from Mars and what are they doing on Earth? And also, how did we actually find them? And although these questions I'm going to answer right away, the much bigger story we're going to be discussing today is the story of a meteorite that actually came from Earth. And it's the first such meteorite ever discovered. So yeah, let's discuss this, starting with the obvious. Every single day, lots and lots of different meteorites, some small, some much larger, make it to our planet and eventually either get destroyed in the atmosphere or even land on the surface. Some even end up being captured by various dash cams or CCTV cameras, especially if they produce a large enough fireball. But the majority land on the planet without anyone ever noticing, especially if they're really small. I remember someone even conducted a study discovering that if you were to go on a roof of some kind of a building, you would discover quite a lot of various particles and various pebbles that most likely came from outer space. But these would be somewhat difficult to discover and to identify. But there are some places on the planet where finding meteorites is somewhat easy, mostly because they kind of stand out. Normally these places have a lot of snow, so places like Antarctica, or one of many deserts on the planet. The biggest one being Sahara, with the country of Morocco, basically almost having a monopoly on discovering huge amounts of meteorites in the last few decades. If you go through the NASA list, you'll notice that quite a lot of these meteorites were discovered in Morocco with the modern estimates suggesting approximately a million different meteorites hidden in the deserts of Morocco alone. Which is why it's actually a pretty big business here, because these rocks usually sell for quite a lot of money. But the thing is, even though approximately 75,000 meteorites have already been discovered, only the origin of some of them have been definitively identified. And it turns out that about half a percent of all of the meteorites seem to have come from Mars. And the vast majority were most likely a result of some kind of a major collision on the surface of Mars, potentially from a much larger asteroid, which following the collision with the planet leaves behind a large crater, but also produces a lot of secondary emissions, including a lot of secondary rocks that might achieve velocity necessary to escape Mars, entering the orbit of the solar system, and eventually making their way to planet Earth and crashing on the surface. With this famous meteorite, known as the Black Beauty, discovered in Morocco in 2011, probably being the most famous Martian meteorite. Also ridiculously expensive. At the same time, during the Apollo missions in the 60s, one of the more intriguing discoveries on the surface of the Moon was this rock right here. A 4 billion year old rock, discovered in 1971, that most likely, almost certainly, came from planet Earth. But in this case, all of this must have happened billions of years ago, when Earth was a lot more active, and when there were also a lot more collisions, both on the surface of the Moon and, of course, the surface of Earth. Possibly during the era known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. There were a lot of collisions during this time, and quite a lot of rocks very likely got exchanged between the Moon and planet Earth. Or at least that's the implication from this discovery. But up until this point, this was basically the only Earth meteorite known to us. And now we have something even more intriguing. Something once again discovered in Morocco in 2018, and something that basically looks like this. At the moment this is believed to be the first ever discovered Earth meteorite. The meteorite, officially named Northwest Africa 13188, that seems to have experienced a very unusual trip across the solar system. And so what exactly happened here? Well, first of all, this is still just an early study, with at least just one assumption for now, but the idea here is that something happened a few thousand years ago, either based on a very large meteorite collision, or an extremely explosive volcanic eruption, which essentially resulted in the production of a very fast-moving rock. This rock then became an asteroid, traveling across the solar system for what seems to be several thousand years. The current assumption is that it was anywhere between 2,000 to possibly 100,000. And eventually, after thousands of years in orbit, it once again 
came close enough to our planet to now become a meteorite entering the atmosphere and crashing somewhere in the Sahara Desert. To be then discovered in 2018, or to be more exact, bought in 2018 on one of the Moroccan markets. And so here, in order to figure out where this rock came from, a rigorous chemical analysis had to be done, including the analysis of various isotopes. And it turns out that this rock seems to contain very similar oxygen isotope fingerprint to what we usually find in structures on planet Earth very often produced on tectonic plate boundaries, suggesting that it was basically created somewhere on Earth and also in presence of water. On top of this, the concentration of helium, beryllium and neon was much lower than in other meteorites, but much higher than in rocks on Earth, with this discovery suggesting that this rock most likely spent time in space being bombarded by a lot of cosmic radiation, but not long enough to increase concentrations of elements like helium-3 or beryllium-10. And so the slightly elevated concentration of various isotopes which are generally produced in outer space basically suggested that this meteorite possibly spent only a few thousand years in outer space, not millions or billions of years like other meteorites. On top of this, the surface of this meteorite was somewhat glassy and essentially represented a kind of a burnt crust, something that was probably created during the re-entry to Earth's atmosphere. Once again suggesting that it most likely re-entered the atmosphere sometime in the past, with all of these individual signs basically pointing at a typical creation story of a typical meteorite. But that's of course the story for now. Quite a lot of scientists disagree with this for one obvious reason. As I mentioned before, Morocco has now developed a kind of an industry when it comes to selling meteorites. And that actually includes selling fake meteorites. Rocks that appear to be meteorites or are even chemically processed to look like one, that could even fool scientists doing various chemical investigations. And so, for now, some scientists actually think that this is just a really, really good fake. Someone faked pretty much everything, including the melting and burning from the re-entry, mimicking the fusion crust, as you see right here, just to make a lot of money. But because the actual isotope analysis suggests that this is an earth rock, and not an actual meteorite coming from somewhere else, at the moment it's actually not entirely clear if this is real at all. On the one hand, all of us would love to believe that this is a meteorite that came from planet Earth, but unless we can find the location where it came from with a crater, similar minerals, and of course, similar timeline, at least for now, the more likely explanation is unfortunately that maybe this is actually fake. A very intriguing fake, one that could even potentially result in different studies, comparing things like, for example, fusion crust, when it's man-made versus naturally made, or possibly even exploring the commercial side of all of this. Because just like with the obsession during the Egyptology age, when there were a lot of different fakes coming out of Egypt, fake statues, fake mummies, and so on, we now might have reached a new age, the age of fake meteorites, mostly because some of these rocks are super expensive. We're talking about something like $10,000 per gram, and a lot of these rocks are sometimes at least half a kilogram in mass. This one, I believe, is approximately 700 grams. And so I actually wouldn't blame anyone for trying to fake this and for trying to make money. And so, honestly, it's kind of understandable why someone would try to do this. That is a lot of money. Which also means that we have to be super careful when talking about these discoveries and a lot of these studies, especially when some of these discoveries come from locations that have basically created a kind of an industry out of this. If this was coming from, for example, Antarctica, it would be very unlikely to have been a fake. As far as I know, in Antarctica, we don't really have a clandestine operation faking rocks just yet. But in Morocco, you can buy these on any market, and buying fake meteorites has been a problem for several decades. And so, at least for now, definitely a cool story, but I don't think we can actually take this for granted just yet. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once this is either confirmed or completely denied. If someone does discover an actual crater and the origin story for this particular meteorite, it will definitely be a much more interesting story to talk about. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.